All right, I'm going to spend a few minutes here looking at some interesting information concerning this piece of work here called the Targum. What is the Targum? The Targum is basically the early writings of the Old Testament. Targum, I'm sorry, Targum, as it says here. Come on, damn it. Don't give me a hard time here. Targum means translation or explanation. Basically, the Targum was the translation or explanation of the early Hebrew texts in Aramaic. See, writing down the Targum was even prohibited. Okay. All right, and here's the two major ones, the two most important Targums. And this is the one I'm going to be taking a look at just a little bit. Sorry about that. This darn thing is really giving me a hard time. Okay, the Targum of Jonathan. That's the one we're going to be taking a look at in this video. All right. All right, let's take a look at this here. Here it is, Targum of Jonathan. Again, this piece of work here is a translation of the early Old Testament writings in Aramaic. All right. Again, here it is. The language of the Targum is Aramaic. That's why when you look up in your Strong's and Corton in certain words, you see some of them are in Aramaic and others are in Hebrew. It was the language back in the day during the times of Neo-Babylon. Again, same thing, Targum, Pseudo-Jonathan. You can read about it here. I'm not going to go too much into detail in this portion of this video, but just want to show you really quick what it's about and what am I going to be taking a look at here. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, you could attribute that piece of work to that Jonathan we just read about. And he's actually mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 37 and verse 15, as you see here. See that? Jonathan the scribe is mentioned in Jeremiah 37:15. Here it says, Why the princes were wroth with Jeremiah and smote him. And put him in prison in the house of who? Jonathan the scribe. Hence, the Targum of Jonathan. Yep, the Targum of Jonathan is legit. That is what was being used back in the day. That was the Bible for them back in the day. Again, it wasn't complete like the one we have now, obviously. But it was the early writings. And it was in Aramaic because a lot of the Hebrew Israelites, Yasharel, a lot of them had forgotten Hebrew. So they adapted the language that was, at the, at the time they were living in, more predominant, which was Aramaic. That was the lingua franca, so to speak. So they were learning it in the language that they knew, which was the Gentiles' language of Aramaic, as I just mentioned before. 
All right, so yeah, this Jonathan is mentioned a few times in Scripture. There are many Jonathans throughout the Old Testament, but this is the one that wrote the Targum in Aramaic. So it's a legit piece of work. You know, a lot of times we look over and look past these things, but uh, it's not there for no reason. Jonathan the scribe is being singled out for that same reason, letting you know that he has an important piece of document that you might want to look into whenever you get a chance, All right? So yeah, he's mentioned a few times. All right, here's the information I wanted to show you. It's under the topic Targum. Okay, here's what it says concerning the information that I want to share. It says that Targums were explanations of the Hebrew scriptures and Chaldaic for the benefit of those members of the tribe of Judah who had partially or completely ceased to understand the sacred tongue, which was Hebrew and still is. So they adopted the Gentiles language at the time, which was Aramaic, the lingua franca, right? Moving on. Origin of Targums. Here's some more interesting info. Oh, come on, damn it, don't start. Okay, let's see here. All right, here it is. And I could just move this up. It says, at the time when Nebuchadnezzar carried the inhabitants of Jerusalem and Judah captive to the banks of the Tigris and Euphrates, the language of everyday life in Assyria and Babylonia had ceased to be that which has come down to us in the cuneiform inscriptions and had become Aramaic, the lingua franca. So there it is. Aramaic was a language at that time of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Neo-Babylon. Right. What else? What else can I get from this before I close it out? Okay, Let's see. Yeah, you could read it yourselves. I don't have to read it for you. Right? You've got eyes to see. See that? Here it says Language of the Targums. From the facts above narrated, this language was of necessity Aramaic. You see that? It was a necessity to write it in Aramaic because a lot of the members from Judah had forgotten Hebrew. The Old Testament prophets, they were all compiling their work in Hebrew. But you'll find works in Aramaic, words in Aramaic. You know, and they eventually have to, you have to trace it back to the Hebrew, the root word, as much as possible. But yeah, it was Aramaic. And even in uh, Jeremiah 10, 11, look what it says here. This verse in particular presents an almost unique phenomenon. It is not like the rest of the book in Hebrew, but in Chaldea or Aramaic, the language of the enemies of Yasharel. You see that? And this verse reads, Thus you shall say to them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He wanted to address the heathen that were ruling them at the time. 
in their own language, Aramaic. In other words, he was dissing them, the Most High. Told Jeremiah to speak up and diss them. All right? So there it is, man. There it is. Legit. Aramaic. Jonathan the scribe was the one that wrote the Targum of Jonathan. Mentioned in the Bible, Jeremiah 37, 15. Again, it is important for me to bring out this video because I plan on extracting some very interesting information from that piece of work of his called Targum of Jonathan. And now we find out what the Targum is. All right? It is the early Old Testament writings of the Bible. When it was still being written, the Old Testament was still being written, all right? So that's all I got for this video, and until next time, Shalom.